car runs on gasoline, a special device called a catalytic converter helps minimize the release of harmful exhaust chemicals into the air. These catalytic converters are made with precious metals, which are a hot commodity and of great interest to thieves. I spoke with Senator John Marty about his bill to cut back on the thefts, and I began by asking him whether thefts are on the rise. Yes, they're very clearly on the rise. Um, it's partly, it's just a matter of the value of the metals, the catalytic converters, which the catalysts in them are precious metals that help break down the toxic pollutants. And so they require a piece of scrap metal might have $200 worth of scrap metal in it. And the value of those metals have gone up significantly in recent years. And therefore it's a very profitable crime for people. So yes, they have gone up. I think in St. Paul, they have gone up like um, fivefold in the last five or six years, and they continue to grow um, as people, as thieves find it's a quick way to get a couple hundred bucks. Uh, you introduced a bill that would make it more challenging for thieves to sell catalytic converters. You introduced the bill in the last regular session. You also introduced it in the most recent special session. What do you have in mind? Sure. There are several things we're trying to do. One of which is we're, it, it's all focused on the fact that the people who are stealing these can do it quickly and they can sell them quickly. And some of the scrap metal dealers are in effect fencing the fencing operations. They're marketing them to these thieves saying, here, you can get it quickly and easily, quick way to get cash. And unfortunately, all it takes is one of those sawzall types of electric saws. You just go slide under a car, a couple of quick cuts. It can take you less than a couple of minutes and it's well hidden because you're under the car. They do it on street corners, they do it anywhere, in the middle of the night, sometimes in the middle of the day. And so what we're trying to do is block them from happening. What we are, several things in the bill, one of which is we require them to hold the converter for several days before they sell it, so if police or others can go there and check them out. Number two would be requiring them verifiable um, information on the fact that they're legitimately the owner of the catalytic converter. And the third thing we're trying to do is say scrap metal dealers can't buy them from anyone other than a bona fide business that deals with car repairs. Um, in other words, if I come in off the street corner and say, hey, I got 10 catalytic converters for sale here, and they pay me a couple thousand bucks for them, um, where did I get them? I mean, it's not like people just, oh, I just happen to have a collection of catalytic converters in my basement. No, they're, they're stolen and very obviously in most cases stolen. So we want to try and make it much more of a hassle. Who are the victims of these crimes? And does, you know, and how much does it cost for the repair? How much are these people out? And, and does car insurance help in any way? Yes. Well, first of all, car insurance does help because if you have a thousand dollar deductible and it costs you 2000 bucks to get it replaced, well, it'll boost your auto insurance rates probably, but it also will save you a thousand bucks on it because it's typical to be paying a couple thousand bucks to get a repair on a catalytic converter. We had one county commissioner from up in Stearns County um, spoke at our town meeting that we had on this, a community meeting to get people's ideas on this. He talked about a local nonprofit that had vans for driving people with disabilities. And he said they had a couple of them in their parking lot cut off and they were like $3,000 each to repair. And so it's hitting nonprofits, it's hitting small businesses and hitting family after family after family. I've talked to people who have one stolen, they get it replaced and they get another one stolen. Um, most of us fortunately haven't had this experience, but it's a couple thousand dollars out of pocket um, in most cases. And it appears that these criminal activities are on the rise. Yes, they're very clearly rising. As I said, in St. Paul, it's been growing significantly in the last five years. And that's not just St. Paul. I hear the same thing. We had this community meeting on catalytic converter thefts, trying to find out stories and things like that. We had a lot of callers from Minneapolis. We've heard from people in the suburbs, everywhere. It's, it's a problem statewide. Uh, according to a Forbes article last year, California requires all businesses to document sales of catalytic converters with a photo or video of the seller. They also that requ they require that payment be made by check um, and to the business or the seller, um, and that there's a three-day delay before that check can be picked up if it's not mailed to a specific address. How do you view this approach? 
Yes, I think that's a good one. First of all, the getting the photograph, uh, requiring that scrap metal dealers, I believe, already have to do that. So yes, that's a good step. The other thing you just mentioned about California, where they can't pay them right away, they either have to wait three days or mail them a check or whatever else. Yeah, that's a good thing. And I think it's something we're looking at adding to the bill because you don't want to have someone who's just trying to get a couple hundred bucks of quick cash or a couple thousand bucks of quick cash to turn in a bunch of these, get the money and run. If they have to wait a few days to get the money, it's just one more barrier to their quick way of getting cash. And um, I think we ought to be exploring every kind of illustration like that. We had people who suggested, why not try and uh, require the VIN number, the vehicle identification number. Every car in the country has a VIN number on it. Why don't we require them to stamp that on the catalytic converter? That'd be great, but again, that takes that would take years for it to happen. And and what about all the cars that have catalytic converters now? Um, there are all kinds of approaches to do this, but we think the simplest and most obvious is to make it harder for the thieves to sell them. And one other thing we have in the bill I didn't mention earlier, we would prohibit an individual like you from just going in and selling a catalytic converter unless it's, unless it's attached to a vehicle. In other words, the only people who could sell them to the scrap dealers are auto repair shops, muffler shops, things like that, that might have excuse to come across them. Somebody coming in just off the street saying, oh yeah, I just happen to have a bunch of them. Um, I think we start with the presumption that those folks may have stolen property there. Well, so I have two more questions. Um, regardless of the remedy to disincentivize the theft of catalytic converters, um, aren't this, isn't this whole industry suspect in and of itself? I did an internet search. I found a local business that advertised accurate and competitive pricing. Uh, the business also spoke of maximizing profits. So as a regular course of business, who, who really is selling catalytic converters? Uh, largely thieves. Um, any any auto auto um, dismantling operation, any scrapyard will have a lot of them too. Matter of fact, some of them you look for the price and how much you can get if they take your junker of a car. If they junk your car, how much will they pay you for it? And they ask you for the model number, um, the year. I mean things like that, so they know how big the car is, what kind of metal they'll get from it, and so on. What valuable products they might get. And they do say, does it have all major components? And they list the three of them. They list transmission, they list engine, and they list catalytic converter. Catalytic converter is the one they list first because it's the most profitable part of the car. And so, yeah, those folks can have it. But if you, I mean, if I'm a scrap metal dealer and I'm getting it from an auto recycling center, um, it's obvious they may have 30 a day if they junk that many cars. But, but you or I aren't going to have... 10 catalytic converters unless we stole them. We, there's just no other reason people would do that. We put it in the bill as a total ban on an individual selling, but we'll take it out or modify it if we need to. We haven't heard anybody argue why that's a bad idea yet. Now, one more question. Is it, it already illegal to buy stolen property? Could charges be brought against scrap metal dealers, especially if they're buying significant quantities from probably people who stole them? Yes, I would love to see that happen. The trouble is it's hard to prove. Um, it's hard to prove they were stolen and so on. We're not set up for that. And law enforcement and prosecutors have so many other crimes they're dealing with. This is, this is purely an economic crime. I mean, it, it can lead to more dangerous things and it's a huge economic crime. But yes, we can prosecute now if we have the evidence. We're trying to make it easier to one, get the evidence and two, um, put the, the buyers out of business if they're going to, if they're crooked scrap metal yards, put them out of business. The honest ones can continue to thrive. The crooked ones, let's put them out of business. Senator John Marty, I want to thank you for your time. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you.